<clears throat> All right, here's a fun one. <clears throat> All right, this cylinder rolls without slipping on the surface of the conveyor belt, which and the conveyor belt's moving at two feet per second. Determine the velocity of point A. The cylinder has a clockwise angular velocity of 15 radians per second at the instant shown. All right, so a lot of things about this problem. <clears throat> all right, first of all, first of all, uh, my first instinct is, well, the velocity of A is right there. No, 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 no. All right, this is not a disc that is just rotating about the middle. Right? This is not a disc that is just rotating. If it is fixed about the middle and it was spinning in pure rotation, then, then sure, yeah, the velocity of A would be there, velocity here would be... That is not what we have. We have a rolling cylinder, a rolling wheel like a tire, a disc. <clears throat> so for rolling wheels, the velocity is not you know, in the tangential direction. It's really kind of a, a weird type of um, rotation right here. So uh, anyway, don't, don't assume that the velocity of A is right there uh, because this is not fixed about its center. <coughs> Let's talk about rolling wheels for a minute. It's a very fascinating uh, type of a problem. Uh, and I've kind of uh, uh, alluded to this earlier in the semester, uh, but wheels that are rolling without slipping, right? Wheels that are rolling without slipping what is the velocity of this point down here? All right, so for just, just a second, forget that it's on a conveyor belt. Let's say it's on the ground. <clears throat> for wheels that are uh, rolling without slipping on the ground, <clears throat> so imagine, you know, your bicycle. I, I would bring in a bicycle <clears throat> here. On the ground, we've got a wheel that is just rolling along the ground. <clears throat> uh, the point right here on the ground is zero. The, the point on the wheel that is touching the ground is zero. You can think about that a number of different ways. Um, I kind of like to think about the tracks that a bicycle tire would make. You know, if it had some riding on the bicycle tire and you rolled it, on the ground and in some you know dirt, you would see that that writing that was on the bicycle tire leave an imprint, you know, like a footprint on the ground. And so it's no, there's no slipping right there, um, and the velocity of the um, tire on the ground is zero. Uh, <clears throat> y'all y'all know how like the long exposure photos. Go back and look at the long exposure photo of the um, <clears throat> of the hula hoop, LED hula hoop, but also if we had a long exposure photo of a point on a tire, uh, it would look like this, right? The long exposure photo of a path, if we put a light, you know, on the edge of a tire, when that light gets down there, it doesn't like, it doesn't like loop backwards, you know, it is always going forwards. But right there, it does have a velocity of zero. Uh, remind me, maybe I'll post a, a picture. If you look closely at an excavator or a bulldozer or some, some sort of <coughs> uh, equipment that has a tracked wheels, uh, <coughs> like a, a tank, you know, an army tank, uh, the bottom part of those tracks, those wheels, is has a velocity of zero. You know, it, it hits the ground, has a velocity of zero. The top will have double the velocity of the um, the tire, the car. All right. So anyway, I'm, I'm, what I'm getting at is the velocity on the bottom of the wheel that is rolling without slipping, the velocity is zero. <clears throat> if it's on the ground. All right, look, what if it's on this conveyor belt? What if it's on this conveyor belt? Do you see that the velocity of point B is going to be the, the same velocity as the ground. So I shouldn't say velocity <coughs> on the ground is zero. The velocity is the same as the ground that it's touching if it is rolling without slipping. It's almost like this is a gear, right? Look, pretend like this has teeth and this gear has teeth and right where, where they meet, if, if it's rolling without slipping, those teeth, right, are going at the same velocity. Okay. I did all that to just preface this to say 
do you see why the velocity of B would be the same as the velocity of the conveyor belt? Velocity of point B <coughs> at this instant would be the same as the velocity on the conveyor belt. So that's why this is a good um, time to use the relative velocity method because I know the velocity of one point on a rigid body and I'm wanting to know the velocity on another point on the same, a different point on the same rigid body. So I'm going to use the relative velocity method. <clears throat> I like to um, start with a point that I don't know the least about, so I would say VA equals VB plus VA slash B, and this is omega cross R, A slash B, and this R would be from B to A. That R would be from B to A. All right, velocity of A. <coughs> do I know the velocity? No, I'm trying to find it. Do I know the direction of the velocity? No. Do I know the direction of the velocity? No. No, this is not, like I mentioned, this is not straight up. Wheels that are rolling without slipping, they have this, you know, this kind of weird uh, velocity right here. So especially a wheel that's on a conveyor belt. Uh, don't guess, don't assume its direction. So I don't know either of this the i or the j component so i better know all of that on the right hand side of the equation all right but i do they give me that is 15 i can get this from the figure i know this is two so let's start plugging things in two i's velocity of a uh, the omega is 15 but be careful be careful that is in the negative k, k. <coughs> negative 15 k because with our cross products, if we want to do <coughs> k cross i and k cross j as what we think k, cro those cross products are, then we need to use the standard x, y axes. So I'm going to do omega cross with r. So I did a, b, a slash b, a slash b. a slash b is from b to a, from b to a. Uh, and don't go around the bush to get this. Uh, so it goes to the left, a radius, and up a radius. Negative 0.5i <clears throat> plus 0.5j. So the velocity of a would be, first let me do that cross product, 15 times 0.5 would be 7.5. k cross with i is positive j, and two negatives, so it is still positive j. All right, And then let me do this cross product, 15 times 0.5, is 7.5. K cross with J is negative I, and I've got one positive and one negative. So I've got negative due to the cross product of K cross J, and then I've got one negative right there and two negatives. Turn that into a positive. So VA <clears throat> would be 9.5I plus 7.5J <clears throat> feet per second. So it's kind of at, at this... 9.5 in the I, 7.5 in the J, right there, kind of at a weird angle that I don't think I would have been able to guess or visualize, all right? So wheels that are rolling on the ground, if they're rolling without slipping, then the velocity down here is zero if the ground is at zero, but in this case, the velocity down here was at two. Wheels that are rolling without slipping is a good uh, time to use the Relative velocity method because you probably know the velocity down there at that point. So if you want to know the velocity at a different point right there, you can do it right there. <coughs> Remember that wheels that are rolling without slipping is very, very different from wheels that are just rotating about its center. This is not rotating about its center right here. 